Nigeria's informal trade sector contributes significantly to its economy. At the core of its activity is a historical community system that drives its raising pulse. Arise Business Correspondent Abi Uwulawi shares this special report on the Igbo Trade Apprenticeship Scheme. Here it is. At the Alaba International Market in Lagos, where many of the merchants here are beneficiaries of a system steeped in history and tradition. Arguably one of the largest informal trading hubs on the continent, this market is a byproduct of an economic model that transcends the very concept of trade and commerce. The Igbo apprenticeship system is a framework of agreements between parties that ultimately facilitate burgeoning entrepreneurial communities within Nigeria's Igbo community. I graduated in 1985 from University of Jankus. <laughs> That's the Jankara University. This one, this one. Greg Okwankwa is a beneficiary of the Igbo trade apprenticeship system. He served under the scheme for six years and today runs a leading musical instrument venture. Greg controls a huge market share as a supplier to churches and entertainment platforms. We all started from nothing. Just, I started from, uh, from, a, from a table to a store, to a warehouse, okay? I even slept in the shop, a shop that don't have door, door and window, no toilets, but you have to endure all those things, know how to manage yourself. And at the end of it all, you have to sit back and say, yes, I, today I am a man of my own. Some people, will always tell you that Igbos don't love themselves. But for me, I don't see it that way. Because I am an Igbo man and I went through apprenticeship. And uh, today, I also bring some other Igbo guys to join me in the business who are not even from my community. Like Greg, Polinus Ugochuku is also an Igbo apprenticeship emeritus and is today the executive chairman of the Alaba International Markets Electronic Division. The best method that uh, the Igbos used to help themselves because uh, it need only to stay a few years. After staying a stay, uh, few years with your master, and uh, when you are faithful and obedient and honest, and you, maybe you, 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 you serve your, ma your, your master for nine years or eight years, or the case may be seven years, then after then, your master will settle you. Not only that he settle you, he establish you. Not only that he establish you, when you serve him well, he will introduce you to some of his friends. Not only his friends, he introduce you to some of the clients uh, abroad, customers in abroad. So before you know it, Many of us serve our master, and we are settled. Somebody like me, I, we are, I, my master settled me in 2008, uh, 1998. So you can, you can count from 1998 to now. This one is lying on it. The master server or mentor mentee relationship begins at a talent identification stage where future mentees' entrepreneurial skills are sought. Families can also set out to search for an entrepreneur to mentor their child. Following a match, a traditional handing over ceremony is conducted where the virtues and expectations of apprenticeship is communicated. During the ceremony, the apprenticeship agreements are set and agreed to by all parties. After which, the mentee begins their induction into entrepreneurship. Upon successful completion, the mentee receives financial support from his mentor to venture into the world of entrepreneurship. The last boy that I settled last year, I give them three million naira, give him credit facility of up to five million naira, and they have. If you can, I can give him. If you desire, I can give him twenty million naira credit facility. He sell and bring money to me. Mm. Yeah. And he's now standing on he his had, own. He had married, built, built a house, important also. For Greg, it was a payoff well worth his time. I look at the money they gave to me. I look at the problem in my father's house. I shed tears. My mother consoled me. And the, I don't even know that my mother was saving money for me somewhere. Yeah. Then she told me 
to go to so so and so person to collect the money he has saved under him over the years. You have saved with him over the years. I went to collect that money, add it up with what has been my master has given to me, and they start up my business. In the first year, I doubled the money. In the first year, I doubled my capital. It, it, wasn't, it was like magic. No dubious business. Then we used to go to Adebewale Electronics to buy. And we were lucky enough because I would go there and buy some scraps and come and make them look like new. And they sell them and make that small profit for me. Programs tutored during the incubation process include competitiveness, business language and bargaining strategy. Others are customer relationship management and transaction processes. Uh, apprenticeship is like a university. You have to learn. There's a lot to learn. And the, like I am today, I, the people that went to school, I teach them business. Camelus Namdi, an electronics merchant, echoes Greg's belief on the practicality of the business world. So the truth about it is that going to read business admin is okay. But if you don't have the practical aspect of it, anybody that is being brought up in Alaba will play you. In fact, by the time you relax or do anything with him, you will understand that that your BSc had little or nothing, no value. Because this person has also read his own BSc for six years. You did your own four years. And you are not opportune to see those things you are reading. But this person in Alaba is having this thing every day in his shop. He's working with it when the customer comes, he's testing it when the customer comes. He knows how to convince them so that they will buy from him. So if you are coming to tell me you are a BSc holder, well, it's good, but anybody that is brought up from Alaba will be better than you in times of business. At another busy trading hub, I met with Nonye Odemina, who had dropped out of junior high school to join the apprenticeship scheme. He runs a flourishing gadget supply chain today. On the notion of business education, his views differ slightly from that of Greg and Camillus. Number one, you must go to school. Even though you are doing business, you could, you could be a president of Nigeria tomorrow, you could be a governor of your state tomorrow. But what advice I need to give, you know, this use of nowadays, I know they are hardworking. I, I know they are hardworking, you know. But what they need to do is being themselves and, uh, and you work hard. There is a strategy between buying and selling. And every business has a secret. So within the specs of six, six years I learned this business, I was able to know the people that buy the business, the people that uses the business, and the people that will supply it to. Most of these people that you are seeing here, they serve one person or the other. And then you know, because of our ego nature, we are not so much rooted in the political appointments. We are into business. So by the time you serve this your master, either for six years or seven years, and you are being settled, you will establish your own. Before you know it, you are growing. Before you know it, you begin to import. Because while you were with your master, you were doing so many things that has to do with importation. Maybe he will send you to go and get the bill of lading. He will send you to go and meet the agent that is clearing the goods. He will send you to go to wharf and check whether the day they will do the examination. So by so doing, you are versatile. While a deep sense of community, support and camaraderie are key building blocks of the Igbo apprenticeship system, the concept of patience, honesty and trust is just as crucial for a successful incubation process. But mentors express concerns about changing times. Youth of nowadays do not want to walk, uh, but they want the good things of life. You see, I also have some of them that has worked with me in the past that we are not able to finish up their, their apprenticeship because of one crime or the other. Sometimes they sell your, your, your goods and pocket the money, and uh, sometimes they, they tell lies. Some, so many of them sometimes go out, and you keep cautioning them. And I didn't, but you know, for a period, if you keep cautioning them for a period of time and they are not able to change, that means that person is not ready to work. In this apprenticeship, is, you must have a trust. If there is no trust, if maybe your master hand, uh, handed something over to you to take care of that thing, and when you handed it over to you and you, you manage it well, 
your master can enlist, leave everything for you. It is Victor Iwulu's seventh year as a mentee in the apprenticeship system. Victor sells irrigation farm use and residential water pumps. As he steps into the realm of sole proprietorship, Victor believes he is well equipped for commercial success. Firstly, I've learned obedience because that is number one key. They teach you obedience and through the stages you learn how to, you learn, you learn the business itself. Then you learn how to talk to customers and how to interact between customers. That is the number one key because when you are rude, you don't have to, you won't learn, you learn anything. Then you have to bring it down to the lower level. Then as somebody who is still serving, you have to be obedient to your boss and also to the customers also. Then that is how you win their hearts to buy. It's not easy at first, but with time, time can tell. When they say seven years, it looks very long, but as the day breaks, we know, we know what time is. So that is it. To gain some more insight into the rudiments of the Ibo trade apprenticeship system, I had a chat with veteran trader Emmanuel Amaifa. Emmanuel, like many other beneficiaries of the model, respects its history and economic values. After the Civil War, most Igbo men lost their businesses, lost their capital, and uh, history have it that uh, no matter how much you have in the bank, you are given 50 pounds, which means you've lost the rest. So few among the Igbo men who still have something in terms of capital, business, they saw that the only way to help their brothers, their community, is to bring them into their businesses and get them to assist them in running the business in terms of, because when you are serving, you are equally assisting whoever you are serving. So with time, they saw that it was paying off. So the core value it has added to the Igbo man system is that it has helped them to build a strong economy, you know. And that spirit of entrepreneurship has come to live in every average Igbo man because he has been able to understand that I need not go begging. I just have to work. I just have to sacrifice my time the energy, then with that, I will get, you know, I will, I will, I will be empowered. If 1,500 of us in the market here yeah, have five, five staffs, boys working for us, we must have taken out about 500 people out of the labor market. And in just a few years, they will become a boss of their own. So the system contributes so much positively to the economy. The model's merits are glaring as an economic machinery, but a few shortcomings also come to the forefront in modern-day apprenticeship. These include the innate interests and abilities of new entrants as primary considerations for mentor compatibility, as well as a general misconception that apprenticeship is for persons from poor households, unable to cope with the demands of formal education. The prospects of staying power, though, have been well articulated with the model's framework, as competition is only a test of true business metal. Competition brings out the best in you. That's when the door is open for them. Abby Owolawi for Arise News. Well, I mean, another brilliant report there by Abby Owolawi. And she's taking on a very interesting subject. Mm -hmm. It's called Umune Economics. Igba Oru, Imo Ruka, Imo Imo Oru, Igba Odibo. You know, as they call it, which is uh, you know a traditional system of vocational training. Yeah. Uh, it exists in other cultures across Africa, but the Igbos have turned it into a major economic uh, uh, framework, and it has to do with the spirit of communalism, yeah. uh, and it's at the base of, base of uh, the work creation system uh, that they have uh, uh, within the uh, Igbo community. Igbos, you know, are known as very uh, entrepreneurial. And when Igbos talk about secession, this is the point some of us try to bring up. There is no community you go to in all the 77, 774 
local governments in Nigeria that you will not find an able man doing a business, running a shop. And it's not just running it alone. You know, he has apprentices who are working under him. who will serve that apprenticeship, you know, for six years, for seven years, and at the end of the day, they stand on their own. In fact, it is interesting that even beyond reports, it is a subject of study in Harvard, yeah. Harvard University, oh, yeah. you know, the Igbo uh, apprenticeship system. It's the largest the, business incubator in the world. In the world. In the world. There is one uh, professor, Ndubisi Okeke, who says, look, Harvard is looking at it, and there is a major report that is likely to come out at some point in the Harvard Business Review, yeah. you know, about this framework. And it's a framework that can be emulated by other communities, by other you know, uh, entrepreneurs around the world. So it has served the, uh, not just the Igbo community well, but also the Nigerian community and the West African communities. Mm. Igbos are not just uh, doing tr uh, trading in Nigeria. They are trading across the world. They are trading, you know, across West Africa, mm. you know, adopting the same framework that has become, you know, a great uh, model. Mm. And there are many prominent Nigerians, as we have seen in that report, who started from this Umune uh, economics uh, level. Yeah. However, there, there is a flip side to it. The flip side to it, in my view, has to do with the school enrollment figures. There was a time in this country we were worrying about boys' school enrollment figures from the Southeast, because there's no peg in terms of the age at which you join the Umune uh, uh, framework. So you now have a generation of uh, young men from the southeastern part of Nigeria who very early will go to uh, uh, join a master and learn from that master. And then, you know, after a few years, they stand on their own. They create their own wealth. They share prosperity, you know. But at the end of the day, you now, we now found that there was a boy-child education issue in the mm -hmm. southeast of Nigeria, you know, because the figures, the enrollment figures were going up. And the girl-child in the southeast was, you know, in terms of uh, school enrollment, going on. But however, there's this big joke in Nigeria that, okay, the man who has gone to uh, Alaba uh, and uh, Aba uh, to go and uh, be an apprentice, he will now come out and uh, marry a PhD holder and marry, uh, you know, a multiple uh, graduate, mm -hmm. you know, and then say, well, I may not have gone to school, but I have money, but mm -hmm. I've used my money mm -hmm. to get my wife who MOSC. Okay, that's the only uh, the, challenge there. Uh, but, but the bigger side of it mm -hmm is the values yeah. which came out of that, values about communalism, values about loyalty, values about street wisdom, values about you know, learning how to survive mm. and developing individual capacity in an informal system, because mm. the system is like the informal. I hope that there will be lessons that can be learned from this, mm. from the major formal entrepreneurs. And you know, we're not surprised that this is a major subject of study in mm. business schools from Lagos to Harvard. Yeah, but you made this point about the boy education issue, but I do wish that girls and women would be trained in this manner as well, mm. because that entrepreneurial spirit is present in women as well. It's not mm. the exclusive preserve of the male. Point I mean, well taken. very, very valid point uh, made there, Tundo. Uh, but for me, it says it all. Uh, good job, Abby, once again, for bringing this out there to the fore. Uh, we all know this. We cannot celebrate it enough. It's a good model for all of us. And it's something we should all learn from. I, I think something that is quite instructive here is this. It dates way back. It goes back to the time of the Newe Youth League. And I keep talking about the Newe Youth League a lot. Uh, the Newe Youth League was set up by Ojuku's father and some other people out of Newe to be able to further a system like this that had been around even much earlier. So what they did was to create a scheme where young boys were given capital to be able to set up business after mentoring them and helping them go through the ladder. And like you said, Nigeria is replete with people that went through the system. The Chikasin, the Gabros, the Innocents of this world, all of them started as traders and then they scaled up the ranks. And some of them have become multinationals and big businesses today. Uh, secondly, another very mm -hmm. instructive thing about this system is the fact that it gives shared empowerment. We keep talking about 33% unemployment rate in this country. We keep talking about a high level of poverty, but it gives shared empowerment across board. It is a system that when you go through it, you have a freedom ceremony and the person gives you a seed capital. So it's pretty much like any other business. You go through a mentorship system, they give you a seed capital to set up and also they give you credit capital because obviously for every trading business, you need buyer's credit out there 
and they set you up and they monitor you. So another part that Abby didn't focus on is that the mentorship, your master is always your master for life. He still mentors you for the next five, 10 years and he still helps you go through the process. So it's really very important. And in fact, he stands as a guarantor for you when you want to expand and everything. So you still come back to him and the good thing about it is the parcel mechanism, the fact that you have to pass it on to other people too and help them grow. And that's why you can see we can build a great chain of wealth and it's rife in the eastern part of the country. I mean, unemployment rates in places like Anambra, you see, is low. Why? Because of entrepreneurship systems like this. Newi, for instance, I was talking about the other day, has a very, very big real estate sector because there are a lot of people and billionaires per capita on the increase going back to the system, and they've been able to develop every part of their economy. And now they're not just stopping at being traders. They're going into manufacturing. They're manufacturing stuff. They're manufacturing cars like Innocent, and they're doing quite well for themselves. So it's a system that we should all look at critically. And you talked about across West Africa. Yes, Dr. Abati, because when you look at it, in Cote d'Ivoire, they have a big setup like this too. Most of the traders out of Abidjan are Igbos. Most of the traders out of other parts of Africa, Togo and the likes, are Igbos, and they've been able to set up this same structure, and it's just a plug-and-play method and a model for them. And it's one of Nigeria's best gifts to the world. And when you see the way things are done, they are done properly. There's a lot of integrity. And one thing, again, that I like about the system, it's been able to bring trust. After somebody going through the seven-year cycle, you almost know that he can't take away the money and run away or, or stuff. He will have to use the money for the business and his growing wealth. And it's a, it's a very, very proven method. I mean, like somebody said in the article, if the, a lot of evil people lost their money after the civil war and this system has been able to help bridge a gap, it just shows you that there's a method to the madness of money and entrepreneurship and apprenticeship is the way to go. How does this segue into the national life? And coming back to your question, Dr. Abati, I love university education, but I don't believe in it. I believe in apprenticeship system for a lot of young people to be able to help them get up the ladder. Yeah, you can get a university degree, yeah, but apprenticeship system too is also important. What you can do, the skills you can learn, because when you see what really makes any economy thick is the capacity of skills the economy has got. And I think this model too is something we can, I think it should be studied in Nigerian universities. And I think even if you get a university degree in this country, you should also get a skill by an apprenticeship system that can help you a great deal. Because the marketplace is really about what you trade on the marketplace, but good system and a good model. Well, good point there about trust, because mm. usually there are no written contracts yes. between the mentee and the mentor.